Ready to Lead Millions podcast with visibility coach Crystal Henry. Discover our guest strategies and delve into their journeys to limitless success and inspiration. Let's enter the Made to Lead Millions zone. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to Made to Lead Millions podcast. I'm so excited that you have joined me, Coach Crystal Henry, tonight so that you can be inspired, so that you can emerge and be empowered with tonight's guest with our great content. You don't want to miss out on this amazing episode. What does everybody do in January? Well, we all get started moving. So our guest is going to be one that you will love to get some information from so that you can start getting moving. I'm excited to say that I'm back from London. I had a tremendous time. And when I tell you um, I'm from the South, so I know how to give good hospitality, but I was graced with amazing hospitality, bowed, curtsy to. It was phenomenal. I enjoyed every bit of my time while overseas in London, in the UK, Kent Hills Park. And um, just shout out to everyone over there. I met people from Ireland, Wales, the Netherlands. It was phenomenal. Um, I went to an international prayer conference. So, woo! I'm excited to be back in the U.S. of A. Now, you know, I always give you um, a some announcements, and then I give you a, a prayer, give a prayer to the Lord, and then we dive in to our um, guest. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I just wanted to say, hey, y'all, hey, y'all, I am back. So let's pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for just giving us the life, the health and strength to just travel, to come into the new year, to be blessed, to be um, excited about the promises that you have for us, because your promises are yes and amen. We thank you, God, that you have prospered us, that you continue to bless the work of our hands, that you give us inventive um my ideas from our minds, Lord God, you give us dreams to dream. So Father, we thank you for blessing us with so many things. And we thank you that you're not finished with us yet. So God, we say, have your way in this podcast time. Bless our guests and bless our listeners so that we can take pieces that will help us, inspire us and motivate us to do great things. So Father, we ask you all of this in your precious son, Jesus name. And we say amen and amen again. Now, I need you all to go to crystalhenry.net. Y'all know that's K-R-Y-S-T-A-L-H-E-N-R-Y.net. Go there. You will find some of my amazing books since I'm a seven-time Amazon best-selling author. You'll find some amazing visibility um, coaching uh, specials that will help you become more visible, more visible, not only on social media, but in marketing your products and services. And if you need products and services developed, just go right to crystalhenry.net and I have a package for that as well. So with that being said, um, let me introduce you to our amazing guest because you don't want to miss out on what she has to offer us today. This is January and this is a time of the new year that we need to what? Get moving. So we will be interviewing and talking to an AFAA certified group fitness instructor, a certified insanity instructor, a certified Zumba instructor, and a six-year Army vet. Our guest is founded Known Excuses, No Excuses, and she has had 15 years of dance experience, including tap, ballet, and jazz. Our amazing guest will offer you some great fitness ideas and instructions. And so we are going to need her 
to help us with our health goals for 2024. So I need you to put your hands together and get your pens and paper ready for none other than Candace Hall. Hey, Coach. Hello. How are you? I am blessed and welcome back. What a blessing that you were able to travel across the world. Yes, welcome it was back. so exciting. Thank you so much. And welcome You're to welcome. Made to Lead Millions podcast. I appreciate you joining us on tonight. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm have, looking forward to an excited. I'm excited. Eh, yes, yes. I'm excited because I'm like, I recently started back, you know, getting back in the saddle of exercising. Okay. Um, I had was, you know, really structured. I had my, you know, four days a week that I would work out and then I just fell off the wagon. (laughs) (laughs) And you know what? That happens. Don't, mm -hmm. don't beat yourself up about it. It happens. The, the most important thing is you get right back on that wagon. That's the most important thing. Absolutely. So I joined a gym in November. So I started getting back in the saddle. And so right before I left to go to London, I said, okay, I'm going to hit all of these exercise classes. (laughs) (laughs) And I was a little sore, but in London, they have public transportation. So you have to be able to like walk fast to get, you know, from the underground to the tunnels, you know, up top on the streets, you know, you might have to catch a taxi. There's so many things that you got to do, you know, a double decker bus. So you have to be like ready to move. So I'm glad I did all those classes early that kind of prepped my muscles to be able to carry luggage and and help my mom. My mom um, went with me um, and I was so excited because that was her first time in London as well. So Oh, nice. We got to experience it, yeah, together. So we were so super excited. And I'm glad I did some work at, working out before yes. we left. Mm-hmm. And you know what? That's a great point. Well, first of all, I'm so glad and excited that you were able to experience that with your mother. That was, that yes. was a blessing right there. That was a um, blessing. But I also just want to kind of highlight something that you said that most, I just want people to remember that. Um, you know, working out, exercising, staying active, whatever you want to call it, it's not mm-hmm. always about um, something big, right? So you're not, mm-hmm. you're not, you're not trying to lose 50 pounds all the time. You're not trying to, you know, get snatched for vacation on the beach. <laughs> and your bikini. Sometimes and majority of the time, what it really boils down to is that you can just do everyday activities with no sweat, right? Yes. You know, when you're in shape, you can walk up the stairs and you don't get winded. Right. You can walk, like you said, you're walking, a lot of walking, you know, you're going to mm-hmm. travel there, travel there. You were prepared for that because yes. you were active. Yes. So I, I try to encourage people not to think about the big picture, but just the everyday things that you do, that exercising is going to make it so much easier for you. Absolutely. And it does, you know, um, we got to think about especially if you're traveling, you know, you got to think about what is their environment like, right? Um, you know, and if you're settled, I have a, uh, a job where I sit for extreme hours. I'm an accountant. Mm -hmm. So I am not active at all. Right. And so I have to force myself. I set like little alarms to force myself to get up um, I have a little alarm, you know, on my phone and it'll say, stand up. You've That's been awesome. sitting too long. And so yeah. little things like that, just standing up makes a difference. Walking across the room makes a difference. You know, yeah. walking, walking stairs, you know, I park a little further. I walk up the stairs uh, instead of taking an elevator. Um, and I, I have a friend that was saying, oh, wow, you oh, you don't need me to wait on you? I'm like, wait on me for what? <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm, I've been working out. I'm good. I can good walk, you know. <laughs> and so some people believe because we're older, well, I'm older, that we don't have the same stamina or maybe even yes. better stamina than someone that's young. But yes. staying active helps that stamina. Oh, it does. Um I can 
tell you that um, I've, you know, instructed a lot of different classes. And I know my core group, we're in the age group between 35, 45, maybe even 55. Okay. Um, and every, every once in a while, we'll get um, a 16-year-old that pops in the class. You mm-hmm. know, that's been playing sports and, you know, they're young, you know, and they almost die <laughs> in the classes that we're, you know, we're conditioned um, mm-hmm. that the participants come like three times a week. Mm-hmm. So they're conditioned. They're, they have the endurance. They have the strength. Um, and, you know, we, we see these young people come in and, you know, they're kind of like a little confident, or maybe mm-hmm. overconfident because they think, oh, there's a bunch of bunch of old, old people. people in this class. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but they're surprised when they actually like, oh, my goodness. Um, I thought I was in shape, but hey, I'm not. Um, right. So, yeah, age has nothing to do with that. I tell people all the time, age is an excuse. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's mm-hmm. why I named um, the studio No Excuses, because we all have excuses. I mean, not just excuses for not working out, but just in general. We have mm-hmm. excuses for mm-hmm. things we don't want to do. Absolutely. Um, but what we need to do is, is recognize that they are excuses, right? Mm-hmm. Quit lying to mm-hmm. ourselves. And then eliminate them so that way we can make it a priority yep that's good i love that make it a priority and you know our health is our priority now let me ask you um this myth i don't know if it's a myth but i'm gonna say it's a myth we're gonna make it controversial (laughs) um how, how much does food play into um, like losing weight when you work out and exercise and part of your exercise plan? Oh, it plays a huge role, okay? So I get a lot of people that come to the studio to, they work their butts off, they're sweating and they burn mm-hmm. lots of calories in class and then they leave and they next thing you know, they're in the drive through of Burger King. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and I tell people all the time, you cannot outwork a bad Food. diet. Mm, yeah. mm-hmm. So it, it goes hand in hand. You, in order to stay flexible, limber, um, have good stability as we get older, it's always important to stay active and stay moving. Um, mm. We lose bone density. We lose muscle mm-hmm. as we get older. And, and that's a way to combat that is staying active, doing strength training, all that. Um, mm. But... We also need to incorporate good eating habits, eating healthy, balanced, um, I guess, proportion, rightly proportioned meals. Oh, come on. Um, come on. Tell, <laughs> talk about the portion. Yeah, because... the portion control is a little mm-hmm. crazy. And in our country, though, it's only in our country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We have a super size, a super duper size. Um, mm-hmm. But we have to incorporate the diet. Um, that is where you will lose the weight and mm-hmm. where you can maintain your weight. Um, if you are trying to work it out, work out, work out, and not change your diet, you may see a small change, but it's not going to give you the change you want. You got to mm-hmm. have both. That's yeah. good. I love that. Um, I noticed that the plates, the portions were a lot smaller yes. Yes. in London. You know, yes. when we went to different places to eat, um, they had they they had vegetarian options. Yeah, their their vegetarian option was you know up front. This is vegetarian. This is the regular. You know they were clear. Um, yeah, because tea time includes milk, so they also had oat and almond milk. They had different vegan options, so that was really yeah. good. And yeah. so you know we got to think about what we are intaking in. That does affect our health. So I came back with a cold and I thought about it. I drank a lot of milk with my tea. Mm. And milk is one of the things that will kind of cause mucus to grow. So we got to think about how our health is affected by what we put in our mouths. So food food is the best medicine. Um, Mm, mm -hmm. It could either be bad medicine for you or it could be good medicine for you but food (laughs) is the best way and you know some people do take a lot of supplements or vitamins and i'm not not against that at all but i also i do feel that if you can get it the natural way where you're you're actually absorbing it through food um it's better for your body so 
Um, yeah, I, I tell people all the time, what you eat is your medicine. You can tell by, you know, what people eat, what kind of lifestyle they're living. Mm, okay. Okay. Yep. That's very good. Now, what about, I, I heard you mention, um, like stretching. Yeah. I notice I'm not as limber as I used to be. Mm-hmm. So what things can I do to enhance um, my mobility, you know, with stretching? So, um, so for like limp, you're just like um, to be more limber, mm-hmm. um, to pre- prevent um, injuries, just yes. making things more flexible. I would say that it's as little and as simple as take 10 minutes a day to stretch. Stretch. Mm, okay. Just pull up any video, take 10 minutes, or just stretch areas that you usually, like, stiffen. If it's your neck, because, you know, sometimes, like you said, you sit at your desk a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, when we're sitting at our desk, we automatically hunch our shoulders. So sometimes mm. you'll feel the stress and pressure in your neck and connecting to your shoulders. Shoulders, um, yes. So what I do when I, because I work full time as well, um, in a tier, I'm, you know, I, I'm a product specialist for um, an insurance company. So I am at my desk all the time, sitting down. So what mm-hmm. I do is I consciously rem, remind myself to push my shoulders down, and what that does is stretches my neck. It relieves some of the stress, some of the pressure, um, mm-hmm. makes you relax a little bit. Um, but little things like that, um, you can just 10 minutes, even when you wake up, when you first wake up, you ever noticed dogs, pets, when they wake mm, up, oh, they, they do, stretch. they stretch, yeah, they, they stre- do. right. We need to do the same thing. It's kind of like warm, warming up our system. Like, you know, okay. you warm up your car. You can't just get up and go. You got to warm it up. Right. So right. every, every morning, just 10 minutes, right. You know, before you brush your teeth, take a shower, just stretch, um, but that is a easy way to kind of get it in, incorporated into your daily routine, um, and it will definitely keep you limber and flexible. Um, what I also recommend is um, for stability, because as we get older, we lose our balance. We're not as mm-hmm, stable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, definitely want to make sure you do some core work. Core okay. is your your midsection, right? It's your mm-hmm, stomach mm-hmm. area, but it wraps all the way around to your back. So it's that it's all the mm-hmm, way around. Mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. your core, um, because that's where your balance comes from. Okay. So if you have a strong core, um, the chances of falls for you are going to be less than okay. someone else who, who does not have a strong core. So hmm. I de- definitely encourage that as we get older. Um, so because, you know, the risk of falls are higher as we get older and the risk of injury from a fall is higher mm, as we get yes, older as well. Yes, so yes. if we incorporate, you know, core strength training and stretching so we can stay flexible. So if we fall, it won't mm-hmm. actually we can we can actually, you know, take that fall. Yeah. That right. will that will benefit us in the long run. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So what took you in to being a fitness instructor, how did you get to that place? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, so it's it's kind of a long story, but I'll I'll try to shorten it as much as I can. Um, so just to kind of give some background, I um was very active as a when I was younger. I ran track. I played a lot of different sports: basketball. Um, I actually went into the military um, for for um, money for school. Um, mm-hmm. But when I went in the military, I noticed that I was in the best shape of my life. Okay, mm-hmm. I, and that's because we worked out every day, um, mm-hmm. and that was not by choice. You know, in the military, no. <laughs> you're forced <laughs> you're forced to to work out. But when I got home, I was like, wow, I was the strongest I've ever been, was best, I was in shape, I had energy, Um, I just felt good. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was always stuck in my head. Um, Years passed, I um, got pregnant with my daughter, um, and I gained a lot of weight. But in the midst of my pregnancy of gaining weight, my mom passed away of cervical Mm -hmm. cancer. So Mm -hmm. that kind of put me in a and a deep depression as well. Mm. So after I had my daughter, um, I was all, I was still depressed because I didn't have my mother there to kind of help me, teach me, um, mm-hmm. you know, how to be a mother. That, that's what I thought at that point. But of course, she had already 
she had already laid down laid down the groundwork, but in my head I was still warning and grieving warning. for mm-hmm. her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so I, you know, I, I, my weight increased a lot, and mm-hmm. I was not able to just it wasn't just coming off like it you know you take it for granted when you're younger you know whatever you want and you don't have to worry about gaining weight but after I had my daughter it was really hard for me to um, lose that weight Um, so what really stuck out in my mind was okay Candace you were in the best shape of your life in the military do some of the stuff you did in the military so that's what I started Mm -hmm. doing Started mm-hmm. doing some of the um, the boot camp stuff we did on my own, um, just trying to remember some of the stuff. And I noticed that a change in my body, um, I, it, and it's as quickly as like a week later, I noticed a change in my body. Um, mm. I noticed I was sleeping better. I noticed even my depression was getting better. Um, so that so I continued to do that. Um, and, and then I started getting more interested, okay, in my overall health. That's when I started researching nutrition and um, healthy, you know, better, you know, healthier eating options. And that, that's when I got involved in that. And then I incorporated the, them together and I was able to lose the weight. Mm-hmm. Um, so once I lost the weight, you know, you you get to your goal. It's, once you get to your goal, it's hard to stay motivated to continue mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. because now you're like, okay, cross it off my list. I met that goal. Now what? So it was hard for me to stay motivated. So what I did was like, okay, let me try some other stuff. And my, my big sister, Sadaka Calhoun, she was my mentor at mm-hmm. the time. She was teaching group fitness classes. And mm-hmm. I was like, well, let me go try one of her classes. And when I went to the class, I fell in love. Um, yes. it, was the, it was the energy that you feel from one another, from the participants. It's yes. like, a, you you know you feed off each other's energy. I noticed that I was going I was going even harder in class because we were so hyped and so excited and the energy was just um, so high. So mm-hmm. I remember after class I went up to her and I said, "I've been bit by the bug. How do I do this? <laughs> I want <laughs> I want to." The way I felt, I want to make others feel this way to keep them mm-hmm. motivated because this is something that will keep me motivated and accountable as well. Um, and from there, she held my hand throughout the whole process. Um, you know, I got my certification um, and then I opened those excuses about almost 10 years ago. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that that's pretty much the story. But I also noticed that um, my depression it, it helped my depression tremendously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think people um, don't understand the importance of exercise and staying active, how that will help with anxiety and depression. Um, when you exercise, you release endorphins. Mm-hmm. It's like a happy feeling, good feeling. It makes you feel accomplished. Um, and it's such, it's so therapeutic. Um, yes. So I, I really encourage people that are having a tough time Get mm-hmm. moving. Dance. Absolutely. Even dancing is exercise. Line dance. Mm-hmm. Whatever you like to do, just get active. It will definitely help. Yes, I love that because I started back Zumba and I used to do Zumba. I was like, oh, I know all the little steps and everything. <laughs> I was all excited. And so I'm laughing at myself now because I got to get back in the swing of things to get these new steps. Um, yeah. But it makes me smile listening yes. to the music. And yes. so it, if you're depressed, go get in the class and yes. dance. And don't yes. worry about dance like nobody's looking. Because yes. really nobody <laughs> is. Everybody's like trying to get their own little steps going on. They so, are. Yes, that is absolutely <laughs> correct. So I love that. I, I love I've gone to Zumba. I did body boot camp. Okay. Yeah, that that hurt. I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully but it was, it was fun. A good hurt. <laughs> it was a good hurt. It was fun because I had okay. to figure out how to do all these new little gadgets. Um, they had like these gliders, so you're gliding your feet yes. and yes. all these different crazy positions that I never thought I'd be doing. And um, yes. so that was fun using the glider, using weights, using the bands, yes. um, using. Um, using uh, jump roping, all of that was mm-hmm. included. Then yep. um, the ball, we used the ball. We did yep. this 
oh my God, we did this thing with the ball in the middle of our back and did the weights. And I was like, hold on, this is... <laughs> Yeah, this is it, more has, intense. <laughs> yeah, but you know, the more intense, the better, right? So if it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. Um, we here at No Excuses be offered like all those classes you were talking about. The you mm-hmm. know strength training. Mm-hmm. Um, we have the bands class where we use bands. We even have mini trampoline where we do Ooh, you know I love that. Um, trampoline. I love that too. That's mm-hmm. a, that's very popular. Um, we have Zumba. We have you know yoga. We have all like the latest and you know the latest trends of different classes. Um, strength and conditioning. Um, But we also have yoga, like I said, yoga and stretching. We also have a stretching Mm -hmm. class because to me, stretching is more important than anything else. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I I think as um, a fitness instructor or a fitness owner, if you're in the fitness profession, your goal is to keep it fun, right? Keep it fun and not boring and stale because then people won't come or they won't do it they won't be continue yeah yeah they won't continue they won't be excited they you mm-hmm. know you have to always come up with something new uh we just actually today we had a class called the woman king that i there's a new class um, <laughs> and the music in the class is all african inspired music music wow that you would hear in a woman king right um and it's like we're training to be warriors you know um, as women so it's a very uh, popular class now but it's it's a new class and i try to incorporate something new at -hmm. least once every once every quarter Oh, that's excellent. Oh, I can imagine. I I would love to go, you know, uh, I would be like, yes, uh, (laughs) sign me up. I'm ready. I'm a warrior, Uh, especially being a breast cancer survivor. I'm like all all into, you know, maintaining that healthy movement. So, yeah, you You got to keep moving. You got to, got to, got to keep moving. Um, My other question for you is, so once you had, once you designed your studio, no excuses, excuses, fitness, when you designed it, what colors did you use? What um, drew you to setting it up the way you did? Um, So the colors were... um black, red, and gray. Um, That color, red has always been a color that just stands out to me. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I was just drawn to that because it it just, it brings the feelings of excitement and energy when I look Mm -hmm. at red. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was definitely going to be the primary color of No Excuses. And the black is just for the background to make the red pop a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, And the white and gray is just kind of background colors too. But the primary color is red. Red. Um, Mm -hmm. But when I designed the studio, I wanted it to have a family feel. I didn't, I wanted um, not only just externally, but internally too. So um, I didn't all, so I didn't want just this to feel like a, like a home family studio, but I mm-hmm. wanted people to, when they walked in, I made them feel that way as well, mm-hmm. that you're part of this family. Um, so that was my number one goal. I think I focused more on how people felt versus how the studio looked. Um, mm, I wanted mm-hmm. to make sure that people felt comfortable because when you first start working out, you know, you're you're subconscious, self-conscious. You're mm-hmm. you may be insecure. You don't you think people are looking at you and you right. know you. And I've been to a lot of different studios and gyms where there's, you know, there's clicks, you know, yes. where certain people, you know, you come in and they don't even speak to you or make you feel welcome. Right. And that was definitely not going to happen here. That was my thing is I want everyone to feel that this is their safe place. This is their place to leave their excuses at the door, come in here and work out whatever bad day you had. We're going to work it out on this floor. So that's good. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love head. that. Yeah, I love that to be a, a open enough open enough space where everybody feels welcome to yeah. come in because we all have those areas that we look at and say, "Oh, I got to fix this or oh, what can I do for this?" 
And, you know, somebody else might say, I want hips. I've been waiting yes. for my, you know, <laughs> hips to come. I want yes. what you got, you know. <laughs> It's not funny. You always want what you don't have. Exactly. <laughs> I've been waiting for that all my life, and you got them. <laughs> so that's mm-hmm. so true. So another thing about fitness mm-hmm. and staying focused in your fitness. I know I um, for a while I loved to, to get on the elliptical because yeah. I could read a book or watch a mm-hmm. movie while I'm, you know, on the elliptical working out and um, or listen to music where if it's going faster, I'm going faster or slower. Um, what things can you keep, what tips can you give to keep people focused and um, staying, staying on the course of exercise. Okay. Well, number one is find something that you like to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the elliptical may not, I mean, maybe it's okay, but I'm maybe, you know, you, you don't love it or you don't really like it. Um, the chances of you sustaining it are going to be slim. So mm-hmm. I tell people all the time that exercise or staying active doesn't always have to look like, like working out. It doesn't, Mm -hmm. you know, Zumba is a great example of that. You can just dance, have like you're at the club having a good time and you're burning Mm -hmm. calories too. Um, Also like line dancing. Line dancing is a great way to burn calories. You stay in shape, stay active, and you're having a good time. Um, Gardening. People underestimate like even daily things that you do in your yard or in your house chores, gardening, all that stuff is all staying active. When you add all that stuff up, you are doing a gr- like you're actually doing mm. great things for your body. Okay. So uh, sometimes people get caught up in fitness. Oh, I got to go to a fitness studio. Oh, I got to mm-hmm. do this. Now, if you want ultimate results, yes. Okay. But when you're first getting started, I recommend people find something that you like to do because it's going to be hard getting started anyway, right? Mm -hmm, So why not mm -hmm. do something that you love? If you like video games, play the weave. There's so many active, what they have, uh, bowling, tennis. They Mm -hmm. got all these active video games you can play with your kids. And um, there's just so many ways that you can stay active. Um, So that's what I tell people that that are just getting started. Now, people that are already in the middle of their fitness journey and mm-hmm. they're kind of plateauing and they're like, oh, you know, I tell them all the time, you have to always challenge your body. Your, our bodies are so smart. God did a wonderful, amazing job designing our bodies and they adapt very quickly. So mm-hmm. when you mm-hmm. start doing some type of exercise, if you're walking on the elliptical, you've been doing that for three months and you're mm-hmm. like, okay. I'm not getting anywhere now. I'm not losing right. anymore. I'm not. That's because your body's like, okay, I'm used to that now. Now what? So you have mm-hmm. to kick it up a notch or change something else, either in your diet or you have to do a little bit more intense um, workout. Maybe go a little faster, increase the speed on your elliptical, or maybe mm-hmm. increase mm-hmm. the resistance on your elliptical, or maybe start some weight training. Try lifting up some dumbbells or doing something different, but you always have to keep your body guessing. Always, you always have to challenge it in order to continue to get results. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that the challenge is to challenge ourselves. Yeah. Um. That's yep. to, in order to continue and stay focused. Now, yeah. can you tell us what the benefits of exercise is? Because some people are like. Do I really need to exercise? I'm just yes. going to diet and lose the weight. But tell us what benefits, you know, of exercise benefits, what are they really? So there are so many benefits, but one of the most important benefits is um, it prevents so many diseases. Mm. Um, it prevents heart disease. Um, it prevents osteoporosis. Uh, paralysis where you you lose your bone density as you get older. Mm, um, mm. It actually helps with dementia, prevents dementia or Alzheimer's disease. All these are studies um, that have been done with exercise. Um, wow. There's there's so many health. Um, it, of, of course, incorporated with a healthy diet. Mm-hmm. Um, but though that is the most important benefit, um, besides the fact that you'll sleep better, you'll have more mm-hmm. energy. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you'll be able to focus more um, because you're sleeping much better. Um, you'll you'll just overall just feel better. Your skin your will mm. look clearer. Um, you'll look more vibrant. Um, you it's oh, there. The benefits are endless. Um, but I, I always try to draw people back. So, of course, you lose weight, too, right? That, that's mm-hmm, the benefit mm-hmm. everybody wants to. You look good in your clothes. Right. <laughs> um, that's the benefit people always want to hear. But I, I tend to look more in the internal. What right. Is really, um, what is there, it really there, doing? Yeah. There's so many clients that I get that thank me, like, I was, you know, pre-diabetic, and now I go, go, and the doctor says, I'm not anywhere near those numbers. Um, Mm -hmm. Or, you know, um, my blood pressure was at this level, and now it's down. Or my cholesterol was here. And people don't realize that before you start taking that medication that they prescribe for you, sometimes all you need to do is just change your lifestyle. Just get active. Right. That's so true. Because I remember a doctor telling me I could never get off of cholesterol medicine and that it was hereditary. And I was like, yeah. no, it's not. I'm like, no, it's not. I refused. I was like, OK, I'm doing something crazy. And what I was doing, trying to get healthy, I was eating pistachio nuts and raisins. Ah, uh, yeah. Not even knowing that pistachio, the yeah. fat from yep. the pistachio was increasing my cholesterol. Yep. Everything I'm thinking I'm getting yep. Yes, I'm thinking I'm getting <laughs> healthy. I'm get, I'm nuts and raisins. I'm good. <laughs> and my cholesterol numbers went crazy when I stopped yeah. eating the pistachio and the raisins. Everything went back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know, I'm so glad you brought that up too because um you know, anything in excess is not necessarily a good thing. So even like, you know, pistachios, you think, okay, that's a, that's a, that's a nut. It's, it should be okay for me, right? But if you eat too much of something, there's going to be usually a negative result. Um, even eating too much spinach can cause like bloating. And like if you eat spinach for every meal every day, it can really cause some digestive issues. So I tell people everything in moderation. Like, uh, of course, you want to make sure you're eating clean. Clean mean um, vegetables, fruits, and some type of lean protein. Um, but you always want to make sure that you, you know, try different things. Don't eat the same thing all day, like pistachios and raisins all day, because if you're going to result as a result, it's going to impact your body. Yes, that's, uh, I was like, oh, <laughs> I had to learn that the, the hard way. Yeah. Uh, water, how important, because I, you know, oh, there's, my gosh. yes, water, let's talk about water. Yes, water, <laughs> I would say um, about 85% of Americans are dehydrated. Yes. Um, that is not, um, that's that's not good because dehydration can cause a lot. Of, I know for me, um, dehydration causes migraines for me. That's one of my triggers for migraines. So it's very important for me to make sure I stay hydrated. Yes. Um, but most adults do not drink enough water. Um, and water does not always mean a glass of water or a bottle of water. You get water through fruits, vegetables. Mm, um, mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. But we have to drink it. I don't drink anything else except for water and tea. I don't drink any um, juices, pops, anything. I get my water, um, only water. And the reason for that, well, number one is because water helps your body function, it flushes out a lot of toxins. You mm-hmm. need that. Our body is made up, made of water. Majority is made of water. We need water in our bodies. Um, but second is because I don't want to waste my calories on liquid. <laughs> right, right. I would rather eat my calories versus drinking them because juice and pops, those are very high in calories yes, and yes. sugar, mm-hmm. uh, which are not good for you either. But mm-hmm. yes, people need and to be drinking water. Yes, and preservatives, yes. Mm-hmm. But and yeah, I, love... I tell people all the time, drink a glass of water before you eat. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Take a whole yes. glass before you even eat. First, it's going to make sure you stay hydrated. It's going to spark your digestive system to start working. And then second, it'll stop you from eating so much, eat too, because you'll have a full glass of water in your stomach. Well, the other thing, because you said it, it'll spark your digestion. Yep. But a lot of people don't understand when you are eating, you should be eating and drinking because the liquid, the water helps your food digest. Mm -hmm. So we need to be like drinking and eating. So get that glass of water in that will help your food digest. It will definitely yes. help you have the eliminations that we need. We should be eliminating every time we eat. Every time. But we don't do that. You know, no, that's, most that's some of us not, don't eliminate once a day. Some of us <laughs> let every alone couple days. once a week. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So we definitely need to be bringing in more water. Um, and the other thing about, you know, the water intake is I, so many people are like, well, I don't like the taste of water. Well, put some lemon in it and drink yes. it. Yes. <laughs> you know, you put, put a cucumber yes. in it and drink it. And yes. one of the things I started doing early, well, early part of last year, I gained a lot of weight and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do no dieting, but what I started doing was juicing. Mm -hmm. And I got a couple of juicing recipes and started working with the green juice. I started getting yes. all creative and making different <laughs> kinds of pineapple and orange and grapefruit and just mixing it up. And so that just really, really helped. I, I didn't realize that all of this fruit has water in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so once I started juicing, that really, really helped. That really, really yeah. helped. Uh, you probably said and felt more hydrated, right? Oh my like, God. Yeah. I could tell the difference in my skin. Yep. I could tell mm -hmm. the difference. Um, and, and another thing for my listeners out there, um, water helps with wrinkles. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Yeah, so drink water, drink water. <laughs> but yeah, that, that really helped my intake. Um, I, I was really hydrated and I didn't realize that I would get headaches because I wasn't hydrated enough. Yeah. And so water, if you, are, if you are stuck, if your thinking is stuck and you're trying to get clarity, drink a glass of water. Yep. If you're constipated, drink a glass of water. Glass of water. Constipation mm -hmm. is usually um, caused by dehydration. There's a lot mm -hmm. of um, ailments that we suffer from that if we just drank enough water, mm -hmm. we would be clear from it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. It would change everything. Um, even yep. even our um, joints and stuff would yep. will, will improve as you drink more water. So yeah. I want to take the time before we run out of time um, for you to give all your information, how they can reach you, your website, phone number, social media spots where they can catch up with you um, and where you are located so they can come and work out, you know, in your space. Okay, well, you. thank you first for this amazing interview discussion. Actually, it felt like a conversation, just getting to know you. So <laughs> it's a pleasure. Um, um, but yes, No Excuses Fitness Studio. I am located in Maple Heights, Ohio. The address is 20528 Southgate Park Boulevard. Um, the phone number is 216-254-6999. And the website is is www.noexcusesfitness and no excuses is spelled k n o w excusesfitness.com um then my uh instagram is if you look up candace hall or um no excuses you'll find me either on instagram facebook or tiktok Excellent. I'm going to have to check you out on TikTok. Yes, do you do tips do. on TikTok? Do you yes, do tips? So at, at TikTok is at no excuses. I'm sorry, okay. what was that? 
I said, do you do tips or do you do exercise moves on TikTok? Oh, yeah. So I do, um, we do fun videos. We do challenges, like we do core and app challenges. Um, I have a whole uh, segment called Coach Candace, Ask Coach Candace. So people randomly ask me questions about health and fitness, and I answer them, and I give them a shout out once I answer them. Um, I have, you know, a little character that I've made up. Her name is Tanisha. She's... um, She's a a little more ratchet, but she is probably saying and probably asking questions and doing things that most people are thinking in their head. They're just afraid to say. Um, So I answer those questions that she has. Uh, But, yeah, there's a lot of great workout tips, a lot of great nutrition tips. Um, Yeah, check it out. Okay. Well, I will. I'm definitely going to TikTok and get my little challenges and stuff. <laughs> I definitely need to work on my core yes. and my my legs. I'm, I'm work on them. And so I'm excited, very excited to follow you on all your social media outlets and just excited to have this conversation with you. Yes. It's just been truly a blessing. It's been a blessing because we all got to get moving. You know, it's January. Everybody makes their new New Year's resolution. But we don't want you to quit in January. We don't want you to quit in February. We want it to be your lifestyle. So give us, before you leave, give us a couple of tips on how to create a lifestyle of fitness. So I'm going to give you one tip. The most important tip is find your reason why. Okay. And it cannot be um, surface level. Can't be, Mm. I need to lose 15 pounds. I need to, um, you know, get into the size four, five, six, seven, whatever dress, or I'm going on vacation. I need to look good. And it has to be deeper than that. Why is health and fitness important to you. Why are you doing this? Um, And if you're doing it just for the surface, you need to dig deeper and find out, okay, I need to find a better reason than that. Because that surface level thing is going to, once you reach that, you're going to stop. But Mm, if you mm -hmm. dig deeper and figure out why, like for me, my why, um, in the beginning, my why was, of course, because I wanted to lose the weight. But then once um, I got into it, I realized I needed something else to motivate me. And I had a young daughter, so I felt like I was setting a great example for her um, to show her that health and fitness was very important. And then also the fact that my mom passed away. She wasn't the healthiest. She didn't eat the best. She wasn't very active. Um, And, you know, cancer was very... um, there's a lot of people in my family that passed away from cancer. We had a high blood pressure. We had high cholesterol in our family. So my why was I wanted to break that cycle um, in our family. So I, I did not want to continue that cycle of high blood pressure, you know, um, being sick. Um, I wanted to do anything I could to prevent that. Um, and also breaking that cycle, showing my daughter that there's another way as well. Um, so that continuously helps keep me motivated. So I tell people all the time, find your why. Once you find that why, you're going to be emotionally attached to it, and it's going to drive you to continue towards your goal. I love it. I love it. Find your why. Well, what I did was I found this fun, this woman. She looked amazing. She was like 64 and had the abs working, arms, everything. I said, okay, that's what I want to look like um, when I'm 64, so I need to get moving now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so and you know, was, a lot of people that do that. Why. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people do that, but I caution you and I caution people um, to be careful comparing yourself to other people too because mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. we don't know... They're, what they background. had to do, yes. right? We don't know yes. what. Just we I mean, that's know. the same with the anointing. We don't know yes. what they had to yes. do to get their anointing. Yes, but amen. I, I'm to glad. That. I'm glad that I have um, the mindset because I'm not using a picture that I, you know, where I was at 35. I'm not going back, right. you know, to that. Um, but I definitely am in a place where. That lady's in shape and she looks good. And so I want to be one of those people. And yes. so based on what I can do, <laughs> I'm going to put that in my forefront and be like, okay, this will, I got to do something 
not every day, but at least four times a week. Yes. And just think about her quality of life, too. So that's mm-hmm, what I think about, mm-hmm, too, is, mm-hmm. you know, I want to be able to still walk on my own and, oh, maybe, yes. you know, do things when I'm 90 years old. You know, I have oh, yes. I have a, a member in my studio who's 70 plus and mm-hmm. she does every move in the studio. She comes to every class. Mm-hmm. She is our he Shiro. We, yes. we all look up to her. We all say, yes. "Wow!" When we want, when we get to that age, that's yes. where we, we want to be able to be as independent, as flexible, as strong yes. as, she as she is. Yes, uh-huh. and I, I have great parents that are eighty-two and eighty-three, yes. and they are walking around. My mom, like I said, walked through the streets. She went in the underground. She went everywhere we went um, during the whole trip in London. She was like, I'm tired. I can't do much more. But she was a trooper all the way through. So um, I definitely want to be walking um, without the use of a cane when yes. I'm 83. And so in yes. order to have that kind of movement, I got to get moving now. Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 So thank you so much, Candace. I thank appreciate you. you sharing with us on tonight. Thank you for coming to Made to Lead Millions podcast. You have inspired us to get moving and keep moving. So with that being said, um, no excuses, fitness.com. Make sure you find her and don't forget to get on TikTok and find her. And again, y'all go to crystalhenry.net. I love you guys. Have a great time. And I'm shouting out to the greatest producer always, Jerry Royce Live. Thanks. Have a good night, everybody.